John Cabot was an Italian navigator and explorer whose 1497 discovery of parts of North America under the commission of Henry VII of England is commonly held to have been the first European exploration of the mainland of North America since the Norse Vikings' visits to Vinland in the 11th century. To mark the Canadian celebration of the 500th anniversary of Cabot's expedition, the Canadian and British governments have both accepted a widely held conclusion that the landing site was at Cape Bonavista, Newfoundland. However, alternative theories have also been proposed. Name and Origins Giovanni Cabotto was born in Italy, the son of Giulio Cabotto and his wife. He had a brother Piero. He is known today as Giovanni Cabotto in Italy, in English as John Cabot, in French as Jean Cabot, and in Spanish as Juan Cabotto. The non-Italian forms are derived from how his name was recorded in related 15th century documents. In Venice he signed his names as Zuan Chaboto, Zuan being a form of John, typical to Venice. He continued to use this form in England, at least among Italians. He was referred to by his Italian banker in London as Giovanni Chabotta. In the only known contemporary document to use this version of his first name, Gaeta and Castiglione Chiaveris have both been proposed as birthplaces. The main evidence for Gaeta are records of a Cabotto family residing there until the mid-15th century, but ceasing to be traceable after 1443. Pedro de Ayala, the Spanish envoy and Cabot's contemporary in London, described him in a letter to the Spanish crown in 1498 as, in other genos alike Columbus. John Cabot's son, Sebastian, said his father originally came from Genoa. In 1476 Cabot was made a citizen of the Republic of Venice which required a minimum of 15 years residency in the city, thus he had lived in Venice since at least 1461. Early life In 1471 Cabotto was accepted into the religious confraternity of St. John the Evangelist. Since this was one of the city's prestigious confraternities, this suggests that he was already a respected member of the community. He may have been born slightly earlier than 1450, which is the approximate date most commonly given for his birth. Following his gaining full Venetian citizenship in 1476, Cabotto would have been eligible to engage in maritime trade, including the trade to the eastern Mediterranean that was the source of much of Venice's wealth. He presumably entered this trade shortly thereafter. A 1483 document refers to his selling a slave in Crete whom he had acquired while in the territories of the Sultan of Egypt, which then comprised most of what is now Palestine, Syria and Lebanon. This is not sufficient to prove Cabot's later assertion that he had visited Mecca, which he said in 1497 to the Milanese ambassador in London. In this Mediterranean trade, he may have acquired better knowledge of the origins of the Oriental merchandise he would have been dealing in than most Europeans at that time. Zuan Cabotto is mentioned in a variety of Venetian records of the 1480s. These indicate that by 1484 he was married to Matea and already had at least two sons. Cabot's sons are Ludovico, Sebastian, and Sancto. The Venetian sources contain references to Cabot's being involved in house building in the city. He may have relied on this experience when seeking work later in Spain as a civil engineer. Cabot appears to have gotten into financial trouble in the late 1480s and left Venice as an insolvent debtor by 5 November 1488. He moved to Valencia, Spain, where his creditors attempted to have him arrested by sending a letter a diracum and a geostesia to the authorities. While in Valencia, John Cabot Monte Colonia proposed plans for improvements to the harbour. These proposals were rejected, however, early in 1494 he moved on to Seville, where he proposed, was contracted to build in, for five months. 
worked on the construction of a stone bridge over the Wadalkivia River. This project was abandoned following a decision of the city council on 24 December 1494. After this Cabot appears to have sought support from the Iberian crowns of Seville and Lisbon for an Atlantic expedition, before moving to London to seek funding and political support. He likely reached England around the middle of 1495. Sponsorship Cabot planned to depart to the west from a northerly latitude where the longitudes are much closer together, and where, as a result, the voyage would be much shorter. He still had an expectation of finding an alternative route to China. Historians had thought that, on arrival in England, Cabot went to Bristol, a major maritime centre, to seek financial backers. This was the only English city to have had a prior history of undertaking exploratory expeditions into the Atlantic. Cabot's royal patent stated that all expeditions should be undertaken from Bristol, so his primary financial supporters likely were based in that city. In any case, it also stipulated that the commerce resulting from any discoveries must be conducted with England alone. In the late 20th century, British historian Alwyn Ruddick claimed to have found documentation that Cabot went first to London, where he received some financial backing from its Italian community. She suggested one patron was Fr. Giovanni Antonio de Carbonari as a, an Augustinian friar who was also the deputy to Adriano Castelzi, the papal tax collector. Dr. Ruddock suggested that Carbonari as a accompanied Cabot's 1498 expedition. She also suggested that the friar, on good terms with the king, introduced the explorer to King Henry VII. Beyond this, Ruddick claimed that Cabot received a loan from an Italian banking house in London, as Ruddick ordered the destruction of all her research notes on her death in 2005. Scholars have had to duplicate her research and rediscover documents. The Cabot Project was formed at the University of Bristol in 2009 to research Cabot and the Bristol expeditions. Dr. Francesco Guida Bruce Colley found documentation that Cabot received money in March 1496 from the Baddy family banking firm of Florence. The bankers located in London provided 50 nobles to support Cabot's expedition to go and find the new land. This payment from the Florentine merchants would have represented a substantial contribution, although it was not enough to completely finance the expedition. On 5 March 1496 Henry VII gave Cabot and his three sons letters patent with the following charge for exploration free authority, faculty and power to sail to all parts, regions and coasts of the eastern, western and northern sea, under our banners, flags and ensigns, with five ships or vessels of whatsoever burden and quality they may be, and with so many and with such mariners and men as they may wish to take with them in the said ships, at their own proper costs and charges, to find discover and investigate whatsoever islands, countries, regions or provinces of heathens and infidels, in whatsoever part of the world placed, which before this time were unknown to all Christians. Those who received such patents had the right to assign them to third parties for execution. His sons are believed to have still been minors. Explorations Cabot went to Bristol to arrange preparations for his voyage. Bristol was the second largest seaport in England. From 1480 onwards it had supplied several expeditions to look for high Brazil. According to Celtic legend, this island lay somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean. There was widespread belief among merchants in the port that Bristol men had discovered the island at earlier date but then lost track of it. Note. Ruddick had contended in a private 1988 letter to a colleague, Quinn, that she had found evidence in Italian archives that Bristol men had discovered North America pre-1470, as the island was believed to be a source of Brazil wood, merchants had economic incentive to find it. First voyage Cabot's first voyage was little recorded. A winter 1497-98 letter from John Day to an addressee believed to be Christopher Columbus refers briefly to it, but writes mostly about the second, 1497 voyage. 
He notes, since your lordship wants information relating to the first voyage, here is what happened. He went with one ship, his crew confused him, he was short of supplies and ran into bad weather, and he decided to turn back. Since Cabot received his royal patent in March 1496, it is believed that he made his first voyage that summer. Second voyage information about the 1497 voyage comes mostly from four short letters in an entry in a 1565 chronicle of the city of Bristol. The chronicle entry for 1496 sevenths says in full, This year, on St. John the Baptist's Day, the 24th of June 1497, the land of America was found by the merchants of Bristow in a shipper of Bristow, called the Matthew, the which said the ship departed from the port of Bristow, the 2nd day of May and came home again the 6th of August next following, g. Weir, Cabot's discovery of North America, p. 116 What is known as the John Day Letter provides considerable information about Cabot's second voyage. It was written during the winter of 1497-8 by Bristol merchant John Day to a man who is likely Christopher Columbus. Day is believed to have been familiar with the key figures of the expedition and thus able to report on it. If the lands Cabot had discovered lay west of the meridian laid down in the Treaty of Tordesillas, or if he intended to sail further west, Columbus would likely have believed that these voyages challenged his monopoly rights for westward exploration. In addition to these letters, Dr. Alwyn Ruddick claimed to have found another, written on 10 August 1497 by the London-based bankers of Fr. Giovanni Antonio de Carbonariza. This letter has yet to be found. From various written comments made by Ruddick, the letter did not appear to contain a detailed account of the voyage. Ruddock said the letter contained new evidence supporting the claim that seamen of Bristol had already discovered land across the ocean before John Cabot's arrival in England. She contended that Bristol seamen had reached North America two decades before Cabot's expedition. The known sources do not agree with each other on all aspects of the events, and none can be assumed to be entirely reliable. Cabot was described as having one little ship of 50 tons burden, called the Matthew of Bristol. It was said to be laden with sufficient supplies for seven or eight months. The ship departed in May with a crew of 18 to 20 men. They included an unnamed Burgundian and a Genoza barber, who presumably accompanied the expedition as the ship's surgeon. It is likely that two ranking Bristol merchants were part of the expedition. One was probably William Weston, who had not been identified as part of Cabot's expedition before the find of a new document in the late 20th century. His participation was confirmed by a document found in the early 21st century noting his reward from the king in January 1498 after the ship returned. More importantly, in 2009, historian Evan Jones confirmed that Weston had undertaken an independent voyage to the newfound land in 1499 probably under Cabot's patent as the first Englishman to lead an expedition to North America. The exact location of the landfall has long been disputed, with different communities vying for the honor. Historians have proposed Cape Bonavista and St. John's in Newfoundland, Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia, and Labrador in Canada, and Maine in the United States as possibilities for the 500th anniversary celebrations. The governments of Canada and the United Kingdom designated Cape Bonavista in Newfoundland as the official landing place. Here in 1997 Queen Elizabeth II, along with members of the Italian and Canadian governments, greeted the replica Matthew of Bristol, following its celebratory crossing of the Atlantic. Cabot's expedition is believed to be the first by Europeans to mainland North America since the Vikings 500 years before. Cabot is reported to have landed only once during the expedition and did not advance beyond the shooting distance of a crossbow. 
Pasquale Go and Day both state that the expedition made no contact with any native people, crew found the remains of a fire, a human trail, nets and a wooden tool. The crew appeared to have remained on land just long enough to take on fresh water, they also raised the Venetian and papal banners claiming the land for the King of England and recognizing the religious authority of the Roman Catholic Church. After this landing, Cabot spent some weeks discovering the coast, with most discovered after turning back, final voyage on return to Bristol. Cabot rode to London to report to the King. On 10 August 1497, he was given a reward of £10 equivalent to about two years' pay for an ordinary labourer or craftsman. The explorer was fated, Soncino wrote on 23 August that Cabot is called the Great Admiral. Note, as Christopher Columbus had been, and vast honour is paid to him and he goes dressed in silk, and these English run after him like mad. Such adulation was short-lived, for over the next few months the king's attention was occupied by the Second Cornish Uprising of 1497, led by Perkin Warbeck. Once Henry's throne was secure, he gave more thought to Cabot. On 26 September, just a few days after the collapse of the revolt, the king made an award of £2 to Cabot. In December 1497 the explorer was awarded a pension of £20 per year, and in February 1498 he was given a patent to help him prepare a second expedition. In March and April, the king also advanced a number of loans to Lancelot Thurkel of London, Thomas Bradley and John Kerr, who were to accompany Cabot's new expedition. The Great Chronicle of London reports that Cabot departed with a fleet of five ships from Bristol at the beginning of May 1498, one of which had been prepared by the king. Some of the ships were said to be carrying merchandise, including cloth, caps, lace points and other trifles. This suggests that Cabot intended to engage in trade on this expedition. The Spanish envoy in London reported in July that one of the ships had been caught in a storm and been forced to land in Ireland, but that Cabot and the other four ships had continued on. For centuries no other records were found that relate to this expedition. It was long believed that Cabot and his fleet was lost at sea. But at least one of the men scheduled to accompany the expedition, Lancelot Thurkel of London, is recorded as living in London in 1501. The historian Alwyn Ruddock worked on Cabot and his era for 35 years. She had suggested that Cabot and his expedition successfully returned to England in the spring of 1500. She claimed their return followed an epic two-year exploration of the east coast of North America, south into the Chesapeake Bay area and perhaps as far as the Spanish territories in the Caribbean. Ruddock suggested F.R. Giovanni Antonio de Carbonari as a and the other friars who accompanied the 1498 expedition had stayed in Newfoundland and founded a mission. If Carbonari as a founded a settlement in North America, it would have been the first Christian settlement on the continent, and may have included a church, the only medieval church to have been built there. The Cabot Project at the University of Bristol was organized in 2009 to search for the evidence on which Ruddick's claims rest, as well as to undertake related studies of Cabot and his expeditions. The lead researchers on the project, Evan Jones and Margaret Condon, claim to have found further evidence to support aspects of Ruddick's case particularly in relation to the successful return of the 1498 expedition to Bristol. They have located documents that appear to place John Cabot in London by May 1500 but have yet to publish their documentation. The project is collaborating on an archaeological excavation at the community of Carbonia, Newfoundland, located at Conception Bay and believed the likely location for Carbonaria's mission settlement. The Archaeology of Historic Carbonier Project, carried out by Memorial University of Newfoundland, has conducted summer field work each season since 2011. So far, it has found evidence of planter habitation since the late 17th century and of trade with Spain through Bilbao, including a Spanish coin minted in Peru. Additional English Voyages
Ruddick claimed that William Weston of Bristol, a supporter of Cabot, undertook an independent expedition to North America in 1499, sailing north from Newfoundland up to the Hudson Strait. If correct, this was probably the first Northwest Passage expedition. In 2009, Jones confirmed that William Weston led an expedition from Bristol, with royal support, to the Newfoundland in 1499 or 1500, making him the first Englishman to lead exploration of North America. This find has changed the understanding of English roles in exploration of that continent. King Henry VII continued to support exploration from Bristol. The king granted Hugh Elliot, Robert Thorne and his son a bounty of 20 liras in January 1502 for purchasing the Gabriel, a ship for an expedition voyage that summer. Later in 1502 or early 1503 he paid Elliot a reward of 100 liras for a voyage, or voyages in two ships to the Isle of Newfinding, as Newfoundland was called. This amount was larger than any previously accounted for in royal support of the explorations. Sebastian Cabot's Voyages Sebastian Cabot, one of John's sons, also became an explorer, later making at least one voyage to North America. In 1508 he was searching for the Northwest Passage. Nearly two decades later, he sailed to South America for Spain to repeat Ferdinand Magellan's voyage around the world. He became diverted by searching for silver along the Rio de la Plata in Argentina.